Imagine you're in your house and it's late at night. You decide it's time for bed, so you shut the lights, you lock the doors, you go upstairs and you go to sleep. Two or three hours later, boom. You spring out of bed, you run downstairs, and you see three home invaders. Luckily, they get spooked and run away. But one of them in his panic trips over his own feet, hits his head, and unfortunately dies. So you call the cops, you wait for them to arrive, you tell them what happened. And you say, you know, Mr. Officer, I'm very worried. What about the two assailants that got away? I, they might come back, they might try to hurt me, hurt my family, they might try to rob us again. And the cop looks at you and says, don't you read the newspaper? The local politician who just got elected ran on a platform that they were no longer going to pursue prosecution against people who commit home invasions. So we're not going to even investigate who broke into your house in the first place. And you look at the officer and say, but if you announce to potential criminals that you're not going to prosecute home invaders, you're not even going to investigate, aren't you incentivizing them to break into people's homes and steal their property? And the officer just looks at you and says, well, yeah, since the new politician took office, there's been a huge uptick in home invasions. And you say, yeah, of course. Well, that's what the incentive is. Why wouldn't criminals break into people's homes? And then the officer looks at you and says, but when one of the home invaders was running away and he fell, hit his head and died on your property, well, under the new laws, you're responsible. And you say, how am I responsible? I followed the law. I was in my house, my property. I didn't violate anyone else's rights. The politicians incentivized criminals to break into my home. And as a result of that incentive, when the criminals ran away, and unfortunately, one of them hit his head and died, um, well, that only happened because the politicians created a climate um, which incentivized the home invasions in the first place. Well, today, we saw many people march in the Families Belong Together march. And it's really amazing how many people will take agency away from themselves and point their fingers at other people for things they're actually responsible for. These people are outraged over families being separated from their, you know, children being separated from their parents at the southern border. But there's no self-awareness that, well, why these people are being separated from their children in the first place. For the longest time in America, politicians, left-wing politicians, supported by people who vote for them, have implemented a policy of open borders. They've advertised to people all over South America that the borders are wide open and if you get to America, those left-wing politicians will, at the point of a gun, understand that government is a monopoly over the use of force. So government will initiate force against the population of America um, to take their money through taxation and redistribute that to people who had just arrived in the Americas. Taxation is theft. Well, of course, if you're in South America, you're going to attempt to get from South America to America, the incentive um, created by the politicians and the people that support them is to literally risk everything in order to get to America because um, unfortunately, because of globalization, um, 
and a lot of corruption and lack of basic human rights, individual liberty, uh, people in South America are unable to get ahead. They're very poor. So if you tell them that the American border is wide open and that just by coming to America without even working, they can make more money, be given more money than they could ever make in their home country, well, they'd be crazy not to come to America. But the thing is, the Mexican side of the southern border, and this is well known, is controlled by the drug cartels who prey on these potential victims, very vulnerable people attempting to get to America. So in order to get across this dangerous land, well, people have to pay human smugglers. They're called coyotes. They pay them large amounts of money um, and often they don't have enough money to send their whole family. So being loving parents that they are, they pay coyotes to send their children. And the coyotes actually pretend, pretend that they're the parents of these children. And along the way, um, because it's such a dangerous journey, over 80% of girls, women that make this journey with the coyotes are raped along the way. And many of the children who um, their parents were promised will be, you know, brought to America and they'll be able to achieve some type of so-called prosperity, um, they're actually given away to these coyotes who are human sex traffickers. So the parents are permanently separated from their children who are raped, who are sold into a life of human sex trafficking, forced prostitution. Um, many of them are even made into slaves. So the situation at the border is very tricky and as a result um, the people of America as a result of this incentive um, that created this terrible situation in the first place that leads to people being separated from their parents um, and as a result of because of this incentive the American people being robbed. Understand that um, the welfare state is the government promising that they will violate people's basic property rights, um, rob them at the point of a gun, because if people resist, they'll be thrown in a prison cell and redistribute that money. So as a result, people pushed back. They said, no, we want our borders secured. Well, if you secure the borders, if you just stop letting people just come in, which is a clear violation of property rights, um, not to mention that people have a right to protect their culture. We'll get into that a little later. Well, how do you do that? You have to arrest people and you can leave them with their so-called parents, but are their parents coyotes? There's no paperwork. Are you leaving them with human tra sex traffickers? We all generally agree that it's a bad idea to put children in prisons with adults. So the incentive of open borders in combination with the welfare state, um, that has endangered all of these children to the point where the safest option is to separate them from the adults they arrive with, figure out who their parents actually are, if they came with their parents, um, and then send them back to their home countries. And of course, if we're talking about separating parents from their children, um, you have to criminally prosecute people who try to cr cross the border illegally because, well, many of the people are these coyotes, human sex traffickers. Many of these people are MS-13 gang members. Uh, many of these people are the drug cartels bringing drugs and violence into America. Well, Kate Steinle, she was separated from her parents, right? She was murdered. And many um, people are victims of crime from illegal immigrants who... You know, they're not the illegal immigrants that are advertised as propaganda. They're gang members and they're um, members of drug cartels. Well, if you leave the borders open, how do you distinguish those people from people who are just trying to, you know, escape South America? So the only logical response is to criminally prosecute. So it's really the people that are voting for open borders who are supporting these left-wing politicians who want to bring more people over from the third world because, well, that'll give them more votes. That's what this is all about. This is about money, power, and corruption. So, 
it's really the people that incentivize people from South America to take this dangerous journey that are responsible for parents being separated from their children. I mean, the people who want the border secured are the same people who, I mean, it's the same as the people who just were in their house. They went to bed, locked their doors, and in the middle of the night, there was a home invader that broke into their home, could have killed their wife, could have killed their children. Um, because those home invaders were incentivized, those home invaders were incentivized by that new politician saying, don't worry if you break into someone's house and steal their property, potentially murder them and their family, um, you won't be criminally prosecuted. Well, it's the same thing at the southern border. All of these people who are human traffickers, who are pedophiles, who sell people into a life of pedophilia, um, who sell people into a life of prostitution, who rape young women and separate them from their parents permanently trying to cross the border. Um, all these people, this is happening because they people have been incentivized to take that risk. So it's the very people who are marching saying that children shouldn't be separated from their parents who are actually responsible for children being separated from their parents. And these same people I mean, they're chanting that ICE should be abolished. Well, isn't that only, if you abolish ICE, aren't you further incentivizing? It's essentially advertising, it's essentially passing a law that you can no longer have a lock on your front door in your home, right? And if that law passed and criminals knew that people no longer had locks on their front door and that if you broke into someone's house well, you wouldn't be criminally prosecuted, there'd be a huge uptick in home invasions. Well, abolishing ICE is basically saying there's no lock on the American, you know, the metaphorical door that is the American southern border. It's insanity. It's incentivizing people and criminals to take this dangerous route, and it's ultimately leading to people being separated, you know, children being separated from their parents. So the very people that are marching are the people that are responsible for children being separated from their parents, yet they are pointing their fingers at law-abiding citizens, people who want to end the incentive. Because if you build the wall and you have the American military and ICE at the southern border and criminals know that they will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, well, people, they won't make the journey from South America to America anymore because it's been disincentivized, which will ultimately lead to no children being separated from their parents. And this is all just common sense. And then of course, you set up a legal immigration system, which is all what these right-wingers want, what Trump wants, a merit-based immigration system, which would result in just as many brown people being admitted into America, they would just be doing it legally, and the people you are getting would be people who aren't on the welfare system, but of course, people who aren't on the welfare system, they won't vote for the politicians that want to further empower the welfare system, which means a legal system would work against these left-wing politicians who are just promoting this illegal immigration for money and power. So they're the ones actually putting children at risk from being um, victims of child sex trafficking, being sold into pedophilia, prostitution, um, being raped, and they're doing it for reasons of wealth and power and political gain instead of a safe system of legal immigration in which people who prove they can benefit America economically and not leech off of the welfare system will be admitted. So all of this is about wealth and power and the very people who are marching that for, you know, children not being separated from their parents are the very people who are actually responsible for children being separated from their parents. Uh, the same thing's happening in Europe right now. Um, yesterday, um, it's reported, we don't know if it was a false flag, but if we take it at face value, Unfortunately, um, people trying to boat into Italy illegally, 
their boat capsized and a um, hundred people died. And if that actually happened, if it's not a false flag, that's tragic. And an NGO tweeted out um, that this is Salvini's fault. This is the Five Star Movement. That's the government that just took power in Italy who vowed to stop migration and illegal immigration. And they're saying, you know, if you voted for Salvini to stop this illegal immigration, you're responsible. Well, again, what you're doing is you're blaming the people who are law-abiding, who are in their homes. You're blaming them for the home invasion. But the people that are actually responsible are the very NGOs pointing the fingers at Italians who just want to protect their culture, just want to protect their property. They don't want to be robbed through the welfare state. So the actual responsible party are the NGOs who are essentially running a, an illegal taxi service, bringing illegal immigrants um, from the Middle East and Africa into Italy so that those illegal immigrants can rob people through the welfare state and change the Italian culture. The people pointing the fingers, the NGOs, are the ones that have created the incentive for people to risk their lives to get to Italy rather than a, than a legal rather than a legal system which is completely safe and benefits everyone and involves no one being robbed again the very people pointing the finger saying that you're responsible for these deaths are the ones responsible this is like going to the person whose house was just robbed and when the robbers ran away um, one of them you know the home invaders ran away one of them tripped over their feet and unfortunately hit their head and died well that's it's the same as saying, oh, well, the homeowner is responsible for that. No, the people that incentivized people to break into homes in the first place are responsible for that. The NGOs are responsible for um, if, what actually, if what they're saying happened actually happened in Italy, it's the European Union, it's the NGOs that are actually responsible for creating the incentive for people to risk their lives doing illegal acts. And this doesn't even get into that, well, you know what, I'm going to call it a video on that. So if you are marching, marching for children to be kept with their parents, yet you support the welfare state, yet you support wide open borders, you support the abolishment of ICE, you're against the building of a wall in the southern border, look in the mirror because you're actually the one responsible for children being victimized and children being separated from their parents.